Uh, good afternoon, Cogwa Collective. Hope you guys are all well. Welcome back to another double shot uh, here on the in the community um, with me, Steve from Globetal, and I'm joined today by James Burt, who's out in London. How are you doing, James? I'm very well, thank you, my friend. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Good to be here. Awesome. Yeah. No. So 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 welcome and so so nice to have you. Um, we actually, especially because of the topic that we're discussing, podcasts. I think it's a uh, um, really big trend, but also one that we haven't done before. You know, we've spoken mostly a lot about, in terms of content anyway, in our double shots, we've spoken a lot about video. And we tend to forget that podcasts are something that's um, probably way more, or well, not way more, but still incredibly popular. And uh, I suppose, especially for people commuting and just putting on in the background, it's a big, big um, trend. Yeah, absolutely. And it's getting bigger and bigger. So this some research over here in the UK. There's a, a, an agency called Radar, which is the Radio Audi Audience Joint or Radio and Audio Joint Audience Research or some wafty nonsense like that. But effectively, they look at radio listening and they also do anything to do with audio. And they did some stats at the back end of 2019, which showed that audience listening had jumped up by 1.1 million people in the UK in the last 12 months alone. So that was a jump of 24%. So it's gone from 6 million people listening on a weekly basis, a consistent weekly basis, it's gone from 6 million to 7.1 million uh, listeners here in the UK. They haven't done any radio stats, obviously, because of lockdown and COVID and all that kind of stuff. But they reckon in 2020, we did hit 10 million people. So it jumped another 3 million people in just a year. So in terms of the audience is getting bigger and bigger. They're more and more valuable. Um, they're more and more, they're, they're looking for more and more content. They're interested in more and more content. They are a content hungry audience. They're a very valuable audience. They tend to be an ABC one demographic. I know obviously your audience is, mm. is agency owners. So they'll understand these sort of socio demographic stuff that I'm talking about. So mm. yeah, they're, they're, they, they tend to be more affluent. They've got disposable income. They're more highly educated, which is why they're such a, a valuable audience. And people who profess to be podcast fans will listen to up to seven pieces of content on a weekly basis, according to the latest stats. So you can literally get to the earbuds of your ideal target market for you and for your client brands, obviously, every single day of the week if you get a podcast right. So yeah, it's, it's exploding in popularity. But interestingly, and I think this is one of the big things why, uh, as a medium, it's kind of a strange one. So we haven't had that kind of like gigantic spike. So it's not gone from like zero users to like a billion globally, if that makes sense. It's been very, it's been a lot slower than that, but we are experiencing kind of like a small hockey stick in uplift at the moment. But I believe that because of the, the sort of the slow pace, but consistent pace with which the audience has grown, I think it means as a medium, it will be here in 15, 20 years time in some form or another. Whereas Instagram might not be, whereas Facebook might not be, if that makes sense. I think it's going to take over from the world of radio. And I think, you know, radio has been around for 70 years. And I think the podcast in, in some guise or another will be here for, for half a century because it's been growing, but not too exponentially, if that makes sense. Yeah, I was just about to say, well, I mean, it's, if you look at radio, it is the radio of today in a way. It's the talk radio anyway of today, you know, it's maybe not I, the music. Yeah. Radio. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the big things that one of the big players who's trying to make a big dent in the marketplace at the moment is Spotify. So mm -hmm. Spotify really going after iTunes because at one point iTunes was literally the only game in town. And don't get me wrong, there's a lot of people who are like, oh yeah, I, you know, the, the brand awareness of Spotify is going up. But in terms of download listening, it's still majority of, the, of it is happening via iTunes. But um, the CEO of um, Spotify, who's a guy called Daniel, I think it's Eck, Daniel Eck or Dan Eck, something like that. Um, he said that they are trying to do with podcasting to audio what Netflix did for TV. So the on-demand proposition of audio is being taken really, really seriously now. But and effectively, the way I always coach my clients, I've, I've launched 127 shows now. 80% of the people that I work with, 85 to 90%, sorry, of the people that I work with end up in the iTunes top charts. When I get people through the door, and I'm, a, as a consultant, relatively expensive Obviously, that depends on your viewpoint of what expense is. But, you know, even in London money, like I'm expensive. But the main thing I'm saying to clients when I go through their doors to their business on day one before we start pressing the record button, think of this like your own pre-recorded radio station. That's the ability that you've got with the podcast now. No one can tell you what to say, when to say it, how to say it. You can have on whoever you want, however you want. You can say whatever you want. There are no rules and regulations at the moment. It's like the Wild West, realistically, but it's so powerful as a, as a brand tool for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so interesting, your timing, well, the timing of this conversation, you know, we've actually just started onto Spotify ourselves with, with a form of podcast. We do these double shots. We do a, a bi-weekly news show. 
on the digital news and digital features and, and new trends and whatnot. And we've only now just started to, we try to get as much, much legs as we can out of the content by chopping it up, putting it on Instagram, putting it on Twitter, LinkedIn, you know, those bitty clips, one minute, two minute clips. And we just recently had the idea of, of putting the entire audio of these conversations, which I'll do with this one as well, onto Spotify as a, as a, um, as a podcast. Now I know it's not ideally the, it's not necessarily created as a podcast, but it's sort of a conversation between two, um, you know, industry um, specialists or people in the industry talking about a topic. So in a way it's a, it's sort of a podcast. Is that, is that the kind of stuff that, I mean, can anything become a podcast these days, any kind of conversation between two people? It can do. I mean, a podcast isn't just the sort of the interview between two people. You know, you've got like the true crime format where it's very much narrative based. You've got, you know, the BBC has just set up a, a group and they've invested four million quid into them down in Bristol, which is in the southwest of England. Uh, and that's going to be like a podcast specialist department. And they'll do much, you know stuff that's much more than just two people having a conversation. It will be audio dramas. It will be narratives it will be you know fast turnaround news content etc all that kind of stuff but, but by and large like the news of the world from the 1930s 1940s kind of thing we've gone all the way back around yeah yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. and and the thing is as well like you know with uh one of the big things for for the explosion of popularity of podcasts you know certain platforms you know like a youtube for example you can't talk about COVID. You can't talk about coronavirus openly and honestly how you want to because they are shutting it down. Instagram the other day, it was really interesting. I put a, I put a post on, I didn't mention the word COVID, but it was a picture of something related to COVID because I wanted to do it as a test. Are they reading the text? Or are they reading the image? And they're actually reading the image because it came up with that COVID warning. With podcasts, you can say what you want. You know, it's pretty much like, so <laughs> there's no, there's no takedown. There's no sh- shut down there's no there's none none of that stuff is that going to come of course it will eventually you know the reason why it's not here at the moment is because the audience hasn't got to a size and scale yet where you know genuine freedom of speech could cause people some issues as soon as it does then obviously they're going to stand their authority on that but to your point um which i've sort of gone all around the houses about sorry about that but uh, yeah your point about can you repurpose any conversation between two people yeah you absolutely can and it's a really interesting one because 47 percent of people have watched a podcast, watched a podcast, even though you can't officially watch a podcast, that would be a vodcast, but they've watched the podcast on YouTube. And then also conversely, 37% of people who've listened to a podcast have found a radio show because of it. So in terms of podcasts, it's an amazing medium because of how um, easy it is to share call to actions and links within show notes, etc. It's an amazing medium to move people around. So a lot of people, you know, might be like, well, I'm on Facebook or I'm on Insta or I'm on LinkedIn or I'm on TikTok or whatever that's fine you might be stronger in those areas i would always strongly suggest that you don't put all of your eggs in that single basket because you are seriously playing with fire if you do that because ultimately amazon facebook twitter linkedin tiktok you know you're playing on somebody else's playground for always Um, but i would always say you know you can repurpose that content really nicely and with a podcast you can move them to other places so get them from your facebook to listen to your podcast from your podcast bounce them out to your youtube from your youtube point them somewhere else there's a really good mechanic 56 percent of people who were surveyed in the states in 2019 so they'd clicked a link in the show notes when instructed to do so by the show host and when you think about the average online is four percent so if you're actually 14 times more likely to click a link in the show notes if the host tells you to do so yeah interesting and i think what you hit on there is is you're telling very much the story of us i mean you know Haley and i obviously we we we're, we work globatol itself is a is a wholesale retail partner we're not a content creation machine we're not a marketing machine we do these sorts of conversations with industry leaders and thought leaders like you because it adds value to our community which we which is is a community of digital agency owners who we're trying to have a good conversation with them, build a community around. We, we take this conversation is, is very much the start of it. We stick this on YouTube. We then obviously, as I said, we put it on Spotify as a podcast. We chop it up and put it into Twitter videos, Instagram videos and that sort of thing, which works for us. And, it's, and as I say, we're by no means a, 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 a digital agency or a marketing agency in the traditional sense of it. We're a wholesaler. But I think what we're doing in terms of us is it's, it's a great um, case study of making the most out of it. Our, our time, hanging my time is, is better used when we're on speaking to agencies and supporting them and managing the operations of the business. But we do take the time out to have these kinds of conversations. I think it's a good case study. Um, 
would you advise, I mean, what kind of advice would you give to a digital agency owner watching this? Is that the kind of thing that they, not just for them, for their agency and their marketing, but for the, that they can then pass on that training onto their clients as well and say, hey guys, why don't you do a video that you can then cut up into a podcast kind of thing? You know, is that the kind of stuff that you, what, what kind of advice would you give an agency like that? So, so I'm saying to agencies, if you're in, in part responsible for the overall marketing mix for your clients, then you've got to be considering audio. It's a massive, massive play at the moment. In terms of, you know, Gary Vee's been talking about audio for the last couple of years. And if there's this weird thing, you know, does Gary Vee predict what's coming or does he say it and then it becomes a reality because he's got the following that he's got? And I think, you know, the fact he was an investor in Anchor, he's obviously, which is probably the platform you're using to get the podcast on Spotify, I would presume, that he's, he's uh, you know, of course he's going to say audio's big because he's got a company that's got a, a vested interest in that being a reality. But also it is, it is the case. Um but I would say to him, you know, when you're planning out this marketing mix, look at how audio could fit in to that overall plan and that overall strategy. And that's the, the, the thing that I'm telling a lot of clients. You know, I've, I've worked with the likes of BMW, Nando's, Thomas Cook, Nissan, Stella Artois, PG Tips, Taylors of Harrogate, you know, some of the biggest brands, certainly in the UK and globally. And one of the things that I was involved in when I was sort of worked back in the day, I worked in broadcast PR first and foremost, there was very... Con like campaigns are very segregated. So there'll be a branding agency, there'll be a marketing agency, there'll be an outdoor agency, there'll be a digital agency, which was like a new thing back in 2004 when I first started. Mm. Um, and, you know, and there'll be like an audio agency. I think nowadays you need to have someone somewhere has to be responsible for the overall cohesion of that message. Yeah. And, then, and then a podcast is an incredible way to accelerate whatever it is that you're, you're doing. As I say, 56% of people will click a link when instructed to do so within the show notes. It's a content hungry audience. And also the other thing is that you're just an audience of, that you can get to at other times where they can't be reached by anything else. You know, by rights, don't get me wrong, I know not everyone does this, you shouldn't be looking at a video while you're driving. You shouldn't mm. really, if you're training hard, you shouldn't be watching a video or reading a blog while you're on the treadmill or training in the gym. Don't get me wrong, I've also seen see a lot of that going on as well. But realistically, you can almost, podcasting is a strange way. It's almost like a passive secondary medium. You can be in the ears of your target market while they're walking from the tube station to the office, yeah. while they're in the car for that 30-minute commute, while they're doing the ironing, while they're mowing the grass. You, it's almost that secondary. You can almost become the, uh, almost like the, the, you can be a company. You know, you could be a, a pal. You could be a friend to, the, to that listener and accompany them at times where they can't do anything else. You know, I've spent loads of time driving around in the car going, seeing clients, all that kind of stuff. Well, I don't anymore because of lockdown, but I used to. And wherever I'd go, you know, 90 minute drive, I'm listening to 90 minutes of audio. Yeah. As a brand and as a brand agency, you have the opportunity to put your clients' messages in my ears for 90 minutes there and back. Now, obviously, one piece of advice I would say is that, you know, if, you've, if you're launching, um, you know, a buy one, get one free deal on a product, you know, that's not interesting enough as a subject to talk about as a podcast, but can you, you know, create something? Can you create, create a narrative that talks about the core messages of your client? So for example, like indeed.com, which is a big recruitment website here in the UK, I don't know if you guys have got it, but they've just started doing a, um, a podcast about the power of teams. It's not about, oh, and you know, Bob from indeed.com said this. Well, when we go to indeed.com, you know, you can find people via clicking these different um, segmentations of your audience, blah, blah, blah. That wouldn't be interesting as a listening experience. However, talking about the power of teams, the power of, in, the, the, in this interview, they've got like sports teams, they've got business teams, they've got family teams, you know, these, but the power of teams and that's their message, their core message of it is empowering your team. So therefore your brand can become the, the voice that's synonymous with the thing you're trying to represent. Gotcha. It's about, yeah, it's about delivery, I suppose, and narrative, as you say. And I think what's quite interesting as well is, I mean, that's great advice. Thanks for that. I think it's, um, look, the agencies obviously um, will check in and check out of, of the topics that we put out there. Not everybody listens and not everybody watches everything, but I think those that do, it's, it's a good bit of advice that you could share there. And I think what's also quite interesting about what you're, hitting on there, whether or not it's, whether or not Gary, as you say about Gary Vee, whether or not he's ahead of the trend or he's creating the trend. Um, funnily enough, I was watching a video this morning about, it was shot about eight months ago. He was talking about, he just suddenly dropped in audio saying, you know, how, how much of a big deal audio is going to be. And we've just seen as well that um, Twitter's launching their, their audio tweets as well. 
which is that's right, yeah. um, voice, voice tweeting. Yeah. So it goes to show you, I mean, maybe we are ahead of the trend here where we're saying, hey, listen, you know, um, there's no denying that um, uh, one of the benefits of audio is it's cheap, it's pretty easy and quick to do. You know, there's no, there's zero production cost for the woman out there. You don't have to put on any makeup. You don't have to look good. You don't have to fix our backgrounds or lighting or anything like that. It's literally just, you know, for a podcast perspective, you can look like whatever you want. It doesn't, that doesn't matter. What, what really matters, as you say, is that passive message getting in, while, oh, that message getting in while someone's doing something passive and you're in their ear continuously for an hour or an hour and a half, whatever. So, um, Hopefully it's the, the other thing as well is that people people like to absorb you know information in different ways. Some people are visual, some people are kinesthetic. So they like to look and feel. They like to touch stuff before they experience it. You know, but a lot of people are auditory, so they they you know you you can get to them via the medium of audio. And yeah. also the thing with the thing with a, a podcast, and they did this this survey as I say that um, in the UK that podcasting gets people at these weird and wonderful times. So like a load of people listen to them just before bed. A load of people listen to them while they're doing their chores. Like I say, you can't be doing other stuff. So whilst you might not have people's undivided attention, you have got their attention, if that makes sense. It just means that, as a, again, from a marketing perspective, if you're always hammering graphics, that's great. But what about someone who likes to read a blog? Or if you're always hammering blogs, well, what about someone who likes to see a video? If you're hammering videos, what about someone who likes to listen to the information? You know, I've, I've listened to podcasts before um, where I've taken so much value from it I will listen to it again with a pen and paper and a huge amount of a huge amount of listening actually happens in the home, which I was actually quite surprised about when the stats came out. Cause I would have thought, I guess everyone does this. that you kind of presume that everyone's like you. So I thought in the gym, on the commute, out for a run, out for a walk, wherever it may be, but actually a huge amount of like 40% of listening happens in the home. Mm. So if you've got a message or a complex or a complicated thing that you want to communicate with people, it is an opportunity to genuinely educate people. People, and this is the thing with podcasts as well. People need to be informed, educated, and entertained. You need to be doing one of those three, ideally all of those three at the same time. And this is to, to the point you mentioned a minute ago, what would be the top tips? It would be, you know, don't just sort of like put out a dry corporate message from your brand client just because it suits their agenda. You've got to form a narrative that actually entertains, informs, and educates at the same time. Got you. That's brilliant. It entertains, informs, and, and educates. That's a very top tip there. Um, James, thank you so much, man. This has been really, really great. And I think, you know, obviously what I think we can do, because podcast, because of the, the topic, you know, if we do get a, a sense that the, the, the community wants a bit more, maybe we'll get in touch with you again for, a, for a, maybe a longer chat about maybe some training you can do with the agency so that they can, they can take away something a little bit and maybe put into a podcast format so we can share it better on our Spotify. But yeah, I think that's been really, really handy. Yeah, absolutely. My pleasure. And I've got one that I actually, I've, so in the UK, I do a lot of joint ventures with PR agencies specifically. Um, so I've, I've actually got a one hour, um, like a little mini training, which is designed for agencies so they can understand it better for their, for their brand clients. So if you guys are interested in doing that, I'm more happy I'll jump on and do that at some point, 60 minutes yeah. and wow. everyone could just jump on and take some value from that. We could do it you know, via Zoom or, you know, stick in the community and all that good stuff. Awesome. Yeah, that sounds great. I mean, we can always join a poll and see who's interested and maybe just shoot straight to them. And you yeah. can, they can pick your brain if they need to, or you can, you can start a conversation with them. Perfect. That's great. And if anyone wants to connect with me, as I say, I, I'm in the group anyway. So James Burt, B-U-R-T-T, -T, or you can just find me at ultimatepodcastgroup.com. You can just, you know, connect with me, pop me a message. I'm more than happy to, to help anyone who needs, because I know that a lot of, I get lots of inquiries and people are like, oh, I don't want to waste your time, but I'm just thinking about it. It's like, that's cool. It's kind of newish to a lot of people, especially agency owners. And if yeah. you're going to be sort of diving into this slightly new or diverse area, you know, just before you do anything or press a record button or try and pitch a client. So I get loads of agencies who've, who are launching podcasts for their clients and they do not know their ass from their elbow. And I'm like, don't do it that way. So before you launch a podcast for all your agency or for your clients, you know, pop me a, pop me a DM and I'll, and I'll make sure you're on the right track. Beautiful. That sounds great. And obviously, we'll, we'll leave the, the, the video up in the community and then you can, you can put your details there. But what we'll do is maybe for that, that training or whatever, or that connection, we'll, we'll run a separate post and see who's interested. That way it's a bit more targeted and you're not getting yeah. people who, you know, who aren't necessarily interested in it. Yeah, perfect. Makes sense. James, thank you so much, man. Have a great day. Cheers, mate. Thank you very much for the invite. I appreciate it. Well. Cheers, mate.